What is going on, you guys? Hope you are having a great day, morning, noon, night, whatever it be for you. Hope you are having the best day you could possibly be having right now. So today we are going to be getting back into Warhammer 40k for you guys. Now, starting this off, I had absolutely no idea what Warhammer 40k was, the lore behind it. And let me tell you guys, y'all have definitely educated me. Um, not to say that I am an expert by any means, but I am, I'm getting into it a little bit by little bit is, is very interesting. That's to say the least, you know, all hell the Omnisaya, you know, you got to pray to him, make sure your technology works, you know, and if you don't, SOL, sorry, you guys. So this is going to be the part one of Brickies, but it's going to be part two of part one because I split the videos up because yeah, let's be honest guys I don't know if y'all really want to sit here for 50 minutes watching this so I'll just break it down in like 25 30 minutes for you guys I feel like it'll be a little bit easier for you so without further ado guys let's get into this brickies every single warhammer 40k faction explain ready now if you want to talk about faith though let's talk about faith Let's talk about the Sisters of Battle. Ooh, the Sisters of Battle. Eagle in Lego City. The Sisters of Battle of the Adeptus Sororitas, if that's how I pronounce it correctly, is an all-female group of battle sisters going through the Ecclesiarchy section of the Imperium. The Ecclesiarchy is, of course, the church. This is, imagine a private army of the church, which is scary. And it is. The sisters are an extra Not to stop it there, guys, but is is anybody else getting like Claymore vibes from that? It's a, it's a sisterhood of just female warriors by the church. Reminds me of Claymore. Extremely zealous force. And they take this to a full extreme. They believe in three main things. Faith, martyrdom, and fire. Through the Bolter, the Flamer, and the things. Melta, the Sisters of Battle are extremely potent at taking out chaos and heretics. Mainly heretics, because yeah, as get they them are a section of the Ecclesiarchy Church, that's the big thing they want to kill. Any form of heretic will face the Emperor's justice through those three main weapons, the Bolter, the Flamer, and the Melta, and they will do so with extreme prejudice. prejudice. Literally. I they like are the, the closest mind. things we have to nuns in space. And I'm talking hardcore nuns. Space They nuns. carry holy fire on their backs. They have holy like books and sigils all across their armor. Their main battle tank is a fucking pipe organ missile launcher. They really? have small babies that they have like removed their brain capacity to make them little servant cherubs to fly around and give them ammunition and shit they look like they monkeys drop from of Oz. churches from low orbit as many drop pods onto battles they drop churches into battles and they blare war hymns and holy music from their frigates in low atmosphere and shower holy water across the battlefield. These are the people you are dealing with and they're fucking awesome. They can literally stave off demons on the tabletop because their faith is that strong. Dang. Remember the warp, the demons from the warp? Well, the warp also manifests in your mind. All of your emotions, negative and positive, go through the warp. It's the immaterium, the place of all things. So if you are that mentally fortified, that mentally strong, you can stave off horrifying demons. And all these girls, oh, not a crack. Not a crack in that mental armor. Now, as much as a meme as they are, and as much as their models look a lot like Ongo, Ongo Gabloglian, yeah, um, which um, I can't Ongo unsee anymore. Gabloglian. I gotta say, I love their design. I think they're extremely cool. They're another army that I'm currently collecting. They just released a whole new line of figures Dang. very recently, that is a and they badass look tank. wonderful. Everything from Celestine, the living, literally undying, Saint 
from the triumph of St. Catherine, which is literally a funeral procession as a model. Those organ tanks I mentioned earlier. This shit it's is organ the most over-the-top badassery in a lot of the Warhammer universe. And goddammit, is it over-the-top. But Brings me back to what I was saying about Mad Max in the first one. Remember the guy on the big car thingamabobber thing and then it's just jamming out flames coming out everywhere that's that's kind of what that tank reminds me of sisters of battle are so cool while i'm a guardsman at heart oh this is such a cool faction by bolter shell flamer burst and melt -a blast the mutant the heretic and the traitor alike are cleansed of their sin of existence Cleanse them. so it has been for five millennia so shall it be until the end of time and Metal. speaking of burning demons i can see i can the Grey Knights are the first army I actually collected back in 7th edition. The Grey Knights are a super secretive and much more old school look at power. Now that looks like a mixture between not Iron Man, but the Iron Soldier I think it is, and then Alphonse from Full Metal Alchemist. That's pretty badass. I like that, I like that armor. Power armored knights, except they are all psychers. All of them have that crazy space magic magician shit. For every 100,000 guardsmen, there's one Grey Knight. For every 10,000 Sisters of Battle, there's one Grey Knight. For every 1,000 Space Marines, there's one Grey Knight. Grey Knights are ass. the strongest the of the strong, them. both in mental will and absolute just strength. These are Space Marines that are all high level psychers. All of them able to specifically do one goal, and that is kill demons. The Emperor believed that the Demons of Chaos were the number one threat to the Imperium, and he probably is right. However, this group is entirely based on doing that through a myriad of tactics. Coming from the planet Earth... So, are they like the Navy SEALs? Like you, you send a team? Do you send a, just a team in of them, or do you just send the one? What would happen if you send a whole team of them? Would they, would they f some shit up? Probably. I guess the moon of Titan in the Soul System. The Grey Knights are thrown through extremely rigorous training and are as clear of mind and soul as they possibly can be. Since the demons of the warp are the warp and your mind projects to the warp, people can go insane very fast, especially lower level psychers. Hmm. These Grey Knights need to be able to harness the warp in the presence of demons and stay perfectly sane. One of their characters, one of my favorite characters, is named Castellan Crow. He has a demon blade, the black blade of Mahamahama. Mahama, and he has to have it on him because it tempts everyone nearby, constantly beckoning them, use my power, use my strength, suck my penis, whatever the possibility. And so he has to keep it on him all the time as this thing whispers to him consistently and he has to stave it off forever being alone in his chambers or on the battlefield because anyone who gets too close to it might be tempted a little too hard he is that pure of heart and mind and so i i keep stopping this there's so many references that reminds me of there is a creator on youtube now called me rj and he does a spin-off of a dragon ball z series and in the most recent episode, one of the five strongest people carries a sword containing the soul of a demon emperor. And Vegito, the main character, tries to snap the sword so he can suck out the energy from this demon king. But it is so strong, even the most, it, the strongest metal in the entire universe slices through it like butter. And Vegito, at this point in time, I think he's uh, drained. Not either nine or ten angels and nine or ten gods of destruction from their energy, and he also absorbed the energy from one of the the weakest of one of the five strongest. And he's over here trying to he's powering up, trying to snap this sword. Sword doesn't even bend, doesn't even move on a molecular level. 
that sounds like this or continue. All the characters in the Grey Knights are basically like that. The only issue is that um, the Grey Knights have a scorched earth policy. You know, more ways than My one. Favorite. If they're fighting demons, demons corrupt and make people crazy. So if I'm a guardsman and I'm oh. fighting demons and the Grey Knights arrive and they kill all the demons, you better get out there I'm a risk. Boy. And so guess who's not making it out of there? On the tabletop, they're very mm. strike fast, strike hard kind of people. They teleport all around the place. They are fast strike groups, small amounts of models because they're so dang strong. You only have okay. so many characters, but with it, you get in there, you're very tough, very tanky, you hit really hard. What are those models in the back, you guys? Quickly, but Somebody let me you don't know have in numbers. the comments. And so every dead Grey Knight hits really damn hard. They're fun, though, if you like that kind of uh, fast-striking kind of army. Does oh, and also, Caldor uh, Drago is a thing. Where are I going to get into Caldor Drago? All right, that is, uh, oh my goodness gracious. I am the hammer. I am the mail about his fist. I am the spear in his hand. Though we are lost, I am the shield on his arm. I am the flight of his arrows. I am the hammer. I am the sword. I am the shield. I am a soldier at the battle at the end of time. Metal. Grey Knights are pretty hardcore. They are as holy as you can get for a space marine. If you like space marines and you want to, you know, that they're holy enough, you want to be holier, Grey Knights. Grey Knights. Now, if you want to be holier Heard. and big, let's talk Imperial Knights. Ooh, Ooh Imperial Do you like knights. gigantic walkers the size of homes yeah. or medium-sized buildings? Do you yeah. want to kill heretics, but you want to kill like 40 of them How per did you turn? Know? Do you want a gigantic old school knight noble house style of yes. walkers with giant chainsaw arms? Then you got Imperial Knights. Imperial Knights, it's not a whole lot to talk about them because they're just gigantic walkers, but they have this old school like house feel to them. Like literally like they're houses. Each Imperial Knight comes from a house and each of them act in their own special way. These behemoth of walkers also destroy almost everything in their path, killing full swaths of squads in a couple shots, stepping on legions of troops. Heck like yeah. these things do not mess Use that chainsaw, so boy. Look so cool. Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights, actually, for that matter, don't have a whole lot to discuss. They're just super big, heavy walkers, and they look different depending on your house or Chaos God you currently believe in. I do and like overall, these too. things are just really cool if you want to murder everything in your path. They're the big, scary, big unit of Warhammer, and if you want to collect them, go to town. They make for a great painting project, too. Game over back down to Earth. A Let's talk something a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little more gold. If Guardsmen are regular soldiers, Space Marines are super soldiers, Grey Knights are super, super soldiers, the Adeptus Custodes are super, super soldiers Super Saiyan, super, super soldiers. The Adeptus soldiers. Custodes are the third major army I own. I, I know, three armies. I know, I, I, I got carried away, okay? But that, that's all. I only have three, okay? It's, Man, collect all you. They ain't no big. They thing. are our final brand of Space Marines, but these ones are super special. Okay, if a guardsman is six foot, a space marine is seven feet, a custodian is eight feet. These are the giant defenders of holy Terra, which is also Earth. Earth is Terra. Earth Terra themselves. These yeah. are the people that literally guard the emperor's throne room. Hence, custodies. These boys protect the Emperor's throne room at all times too, and are literally like handcrafted people. They're not humans brought up by a gene seer or something. These are all handcrafted super soldiers. I think mm. from a tube. These behemoths tube of men soldiers. are like eight feet, eight and a half feet tall and functionally immortal. They stand still, spear in hand for hundreds of years without the need to sleep and barely even the need to eat watching over the throne room and every other area of holy terra for their entire purpose in life and oh my lord are they terrifying these Can custodians put space marines to shame if you liked your super soldiers, these are your super mega soldiers. One of these men can take on probably three space marines and most likely win. There are many different groups of custodians as well, like the Solar Watch, or there's also one of my personal favorite, the Aquilin Shield. 
The Okoro and Shield go like out to jumpsuit. seemingly unimportant individuals and protect them because they believe that they are going to be doing something very important in their lives. For instance, let's say a, a regular guardsman gets the protection of this giant eight and a half foot tall golden god because that guardsman will end up becoming a general one day or something of that nature. He the custodians work in mysterious ways and are almost always outnumbered but never outmatched. These people are pretty horrifying, both on the tabletop as well as in the lore. There are very few of them, however, and there's actually an extremely small amount of them. Oh, but that's, so that's kind of the point. There's only so many of these people that can have war gear this strong, weapons this powerful, and training this good. And the custodians oh have all three of it. For 100 years, I stood my watch amidst the somber shadows of the Sanctum Imperialis. I was still as a statue, but always ready, always attuned to dangers unseen. Days, months, years passed by in a frenzied blur beyond those walls, yet within, little moved and nothing changed. For 100 years I did not but wait, yet had any threat appeared I would have struck it down in a heartbeat. For 100, For 100 years, years I stood, stood my watch, and, and as it ends, I can, I can tell, tell you this, patience is a, is a weapon. The custodians are the top dogs of the Imperium, and they hurt just that same way. Though I do want to discuss a little bit about the Sisters of Silence before we hmm. get out of here, because the Sisters of Silence I also have a few of, and they're really fun, but they don't get enough attention. These wow. kind of bald plume ladies are a whole group of pariahs are also known as blanks. We'll be referring to them as blanks from now on. So mm -hmm. as every mind is somewhat connected to the warp, mm -hmm. these blanks are a genetic mutation that is, has it suppressed heavily. Because of that mind suppression, normal people feel this weird, like, uncomfortable nature when around them. When a sister of silence walks past them, you feel ill. You feel just uncomfortable and strange. So most of them don't actually live past childhood because once they are birthed, they're, well, you know, killed or something at a very young age because they just emit a horrifying aura. These ladies, however, are guardians of the throne as well for more psychic threats. See, so they were kind of like the Spartan boys. If anybody was disfigured, they would throw them off a cliff and only... Everybody that was whole survived. That's kind of what I'm getting. So if you get a freaky feeling from a little girl, they toss, they, they just, they're taking you out. I'm sorry. None of the custodians are psychers, so they have a difficult time dealing with major demons and other kinds of psychic phenomena. These sisters are extremely specialized in it, all of them taking a vow of silence as they don't speak, hence the term sisters of silence, but they communicate through hand gestures and things of that nature. But if there's a demon issue, if there's any kind of warp-based problem, the sisters are extremely adept at dealing with them. A lot of time with the custodians because they have to deal with both kinds of threats, but they're not represented that way on the tabletop. In fact, they only have like one real model for them, which is very unfortunate. I hope they'll get something new soon because I think they should really be working together as it is that way in the lore, but hopefully we'll get there soon. But if we're talking about blanks, let's talk assassins. They ain't making money, they don't care. It's been a long video. We're about to round it out. We got this and one more human thing and then we're done. The assassins Yay. though, the officio assassinorum. Oh boy, these people are deadly. Yeah, they're called assassins. They should be, but oh man, these people will mess you up. So these are from the Officio cool. Assassinorum, a very special organization, and they are handpicked by the Grand Master of the Officio Assassinorum from the Shit, what was it called? Scola Progenium. Scola it's basically an orphan Progenium. school. Your parents got murdered by demons or something. You get sent to this and you get trained to be whatever. Uh, Tempestus Drop Troop, uh, an Inquisitor maybe even. Uh, maybe you get a blank gene and you get thrown into the Sisters of Silence. Or, or sometimes you just disappear. When you are taken, however, you go to one of four temples because the Assassinorum works in the temple style of things. Each, these temples are the Vindicare, Caluxus, Calidus, and Eversore temples. We'll start with the Vindicare. I'm far away. I've been sitting here for three weeks, waiting. Poof! 
The Vindicare gotcha. Temple is the gotcha. main sniper based temple. Gigantic sniper rifles for all these assassins. Their whole point is to be able to be in a spot and sit there, eye in scope, for weeks, waiting for their perfect target, taking people out from literal miles away after yeah. extremely long time periods. The Vindicare Temple is about precise, perfect aim. There have been reports of Vindicares being able to single out particular body parts from over two, three miles away. Temples in the head, the jugular, for instance, and been sitting there after weeks. And when they're ready, take that okay, shot. Time is done, packs them up. The Caldus Temple, however, is a lot more about shape-shifting and deviant art. It's mostly a female-based one, or at least it seems to be, and this allows a lot of body augmentation for certain individuals to be able to kind of transmorph themselves and infiltrate areas that are problems. These assassins will end up taking missions that take them years, two, three years, to infiltrate a heretical group and slowly work their way up just to get enough time to put a bullet into the main target's head and then escape unharmed, or become the main target and sabotage it from within. These are all completely about deception, mind tricks, polymorphing, and everything in between. And uh, lots of drawings, lots of drawings. The Eversor lots Temple. Lots of drawings. Now, sorry to stop it again, guys. He said they can transmorph, transform. I, I kind of lost that in translation. What can they transform into? If you don't mind me asking, if somebody leave that information down there for me, it would be so helpful. Thank you, guys. Continue. Just kind of disturbing one. The Eversor Temple is about when you don't want anything to come back alive, friend or foe. You want it all dead. So and Eversor sure. is psychogenically conditioned with just psychotherapy and psychological torture to only feel violence, hatred, and anger. It does the clockwork orange style of thing of just making you forced to watch never-ending pain and misery and, and psycho conditioning, I guess is the term. And then they pump you full of tons of psychedelic drugs and they cryo-freeze you. And then they drop you in an area where they just want to make sure everything is dead. And then you defrost full of just all this insane, mind-boggling psychotherapy and, and psychedelic drugs and you just go to town. Yeah, if you you don't care if anyone comes back alive. You're like, all right, lost cause, send them in. Finally, there's the most bizarre the temple, the Calexus Temple. The Calexus assassins are feared even among the other temples. He looks like so a predator. So that blank gene, the people will go to the Calexus Temple with this as well. And this is where they can harness that to be massively anti-psyker or even just anti-regular people. They're seen with extreme fear and uh, distrust among many, many people. They're described by the Eldar, by quote, as being pure evil. Imagine that uncomfortable feeling from that blank gene I mentioned, and then imagine them being taught and given equipment to amplify it by a hundred. Yeah. If normally regular people feel uncomfortable, That's now like they are sick. basically akin to being a siren wailing directly in your ear. And if you're a psyker, Oh no, the sheer presence of a Klux assassin is enough for you to tear your skin off. You will rather gouge your eyes out and rip your nails off than even being near this person. The Klux assassin is when you want psychers to literally lose their minds and they will go on their knees and ask you to gun them down because it is a suitable choice over being anywhere near you. The motto of that temple is, Metal. that which is unknown and unseen commands the greatest fear. Now for the tabletop. The now, I, I think that that quote, one of the biggest biggest truths I've ever heard in my life. Let's, let's go back, let's, let's look at that again. That which is unknown and unseen commands the greatest fear. It's the things that we don't know, the unknown, that that is usually what scares the most people. Yeah, absolutely. Assassins aren't that 
special. You can call them in no matter what Imperium faction you are. And they do a lot of work for themselves, but at the same time, they're very now specialized and require a lot of like, finesse. Uh, and they work the, the way you generally want Mars them to do. You want to cause some distortion and weird stuff, you take a Calidus. You want to just murder swaths of infantry and then blow up Eversor. You want to kill that one guy, Vindicare, and if you have a lot of Psychers, Caluxus. It's Caluxus. a nice little, like, jack-of-all-trades if you have a specific thing you want to kill. And you get to choose which. I think which, Caluxus is, is my favorite. But now... Let's talk about the last human faction. We can round this video out before we do part two. The Inquisition. The Inquisition. We have a lot to talk about with them. I'm on the subject of heresy. Heresy. Oh Where do I even begin with the Inquisition? Take, take every secret police you can think of. Uh, the KGB, the Gestapo, the CIA, FBI, any of these kinds of people. Yeah. And then mark it up by about 10 and give them the most power in the entire Imperium. No, you know what? How about this? This, okay. this right here, it's a, not just a quote. This is the Imperial motto, the motto of the Inquisition. I apologize for my bad pronunciation. Innocentia nihil probat. Innocence proves nothing. The most powerful organization in the Imperium, the secret police, their number one motto is innocence proves nothing. The Inquisition goes around like the secret police or like detectives to find issues in the Imperium. And they have different Ordos, depending on which one we're talking about. The Ordo Hereticus, the Ordo Xenos, uh, the Ordo Malleus, for instance, and a whole bunch of other ones. Hereticus is obvious, they deal with heretics. Xenos tries to find alien threats, and Malleus is demons. They all have different specializations in what they're trying to go for as this Inquisitor. And that's what they're called, Inquisitors. Each of them, as an Inquisitor, has their own free reign to do as they wish. They may have a ship and a crew, and they go out to find problems and interrogate people a lot they are above the law in every department over space marines now the space marines might argue against them and stuff and there might be a lot of blowback but technically they are above them as inquisitors <laughs> they are looking to investigate and figure out coups and cults and demonic incursions and possible xenos issues like gene stealers or a new uh, threat coming into an area they're about learning that stuff and actually doing detective work and memes aside they're pretty good at it the inquisition having all of this power does make them a little bit power hungry and frantic sometimes and yes it is still a bad thing but most of them are pretty good at their job and they spend a lot of time being very diligent to make sure that all of these leads they follow are proper and correct they're basically space detectives with just enormous power and sometimes a bit of a power complex and we haven't even talked about exterminatus yet exterminatus exterminatus is deeming a planet unfit to be saved i deem that this planet is demon infested and taking it back will cost too many resources and is not worth it i have now committed exterminatus on this planet i will now sign the death warrant of an entire imperium planet as it is unfit to take and better to be destroyed than allow the enemy to hold it this can mean saturation bombardment. This can mean cracking the planet's core and breaking it apart. Doesn't matter. Render this planet inhospitable to all life. Yes, the innocence proves nothing people are the only people who can choose this planet must die in its entirety. Yeah, you're playing the villain. <laughs> Now, it is memed a lot, but most Inquisitors are very planet. rare to do Exterminatus. Exterminatus is a very crazy thing. There's only so many worlds that you don't want to destroy all of them. Uh, now, naturally, with the memes aside, there are some people who are a little bit rough on this one. <coughs> <coughs> but most Inquisitors generally don't like to do Exterminatus a ton, but it is an option they have. And it's a crazy option when you think about it. Secret Police Inquisition are unfortunately Definitely not represented on the tabletop very much. You generally kind of put one in your army if you feel like it. You have a couple special options there and some side content. But they're not really fleshed out very well. And personally, they need a lot more 
stuff put in there and they, they really need a lot more effort put into them and they're not quite where I want them to be. Overall, the Inquisition makes for a lot of the best storytelling as well because it's a little bit hard to talk about a big story of a whole bunch of space marines killing something, right? It's just a big battle story. It's not as interesting. Having that intrigue Gotta and that moral dilemma that an Inquisitor has makes for a lot better media. And honestly, yeah, the more bit. people do it, I think it's better because then it adds a little more humanity to the Warhammer horrible, horrible grim darkness. And wow, we just finished the humans, all right? Come back for part Yay. two when we talk about Chaos and Xenos because we got to talk about the four Chaos Gods and all Ooh. the Chaos Marine Legions and Ooh. the Tau and the Necrons and the Orcs and oh boy, we got a lot. Oh, it sounds I'll like see part, part two will be better. Alrighty guys, well that is going to be the video for the day. Wow, Warhammer 40k. That that was a lot of information to absorb. Um, yeah guys, so I'm still like learning about this. So I am curious, like if I wanted to get into the tabletop, like where would I even begin? Like what's your favorite faction to play as? Is he going to talk about it in part two? Let me know down in the comments guys. Let me, uh... Continue to educate me on this subject, because like I said, just now getting into it, would love to know more, but hey, fresh to it. So, without further ado guys, don't forget that this is not just the anime, lore, Warhammer 40k reaction channel. We do a lot of things, we do music, funny videos, anime, and we're doing lore now too, cool. Who would have known? Y'all like it, so I'm going to do it. So guys, with that being said, y'all have a great rest of your day. Love you guys. Thank y'all for the support. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button before you head out of here. That's helped me so much. And guys, don't forget, be easy.